Hey folks, welcome back to the Tower Tech. One of my very good friends uh, has decided after seven years to build himself a new PC. Genuinely a really big deal for this guy. Uh, he's quite careful with money, so a big purchase. And for the first time ever, he's, uh, he's decided to do a water cooling build. He asked me if I wouldn't mind helping him put it together. Of course, the answer was yes. And we've filmed it. Let's get into it. So the brief was a 1440p gaming behemoth where he could crank up all of his settings to ultra. No use cases really other than gaming. He's got a laptop for all his work stuff. He doesn't do video editing or anything like that. So uh, despite my objections, we've gone for an Intel build. I have got quite the penchant for AMD, as you all know, uh, but I think it's come out really nice. Uh, water cooling throughout with the CPU and GPU, an entirely custom loop, and one hell of a montage.
So we built this in the Lan Lee PC-011, which I have to say is a really nice case. The tempered glass, uh, it kind of smoked tempered glass, which gave it a nice uh, aesthetic. And we, Ben's really into, into Star Wars, so we were going for a kind of sort of Death Star themed type build. So the darker glass, I think, fit that really nicely. Um, and this case has got absolutely behemoths of space for water cooling, given that it's a relatively moderate form factor. I, I was quite impressed with that. Loads of space for hard drive cages, uh, etc. But I did have one major gripe with this case, and that was the absolute, absolutely appalling placement of the I.O. Now it does have USB-C which is nice to see on a case but the placement actually prevents you from putting uh, a 360mm vertically mounted rad on the on the side fittings and uh, you can't mount the rad on the inside the motherboard side uh, of of that space when you've got a rad top or bottom or both. So Actually, it's impossible to fit three 360mm rads in this case when it really, with some very small tweaks and modifications, really would be quite easy to do, I think. So that would be my big bit of feedback, I think, to Lan uh, Lee. Um, one very small other gripe was that the when you've got the radiators mounted in the top and the bottom, they, they don't quite line up. They're kind of slightly offset if that makes sense so if you're running hard tubing from one radiator to the other you you have to put a kind of a small small bend a small kink if you were uh in into the tubing in order to get it to fit um very very minor uh niggle um i do note that there are some really nice kind of flat reservoirs that you can fit into this case so you know may, maybe the intention of the design was that but really I think given that there was just a fraction of an inch uh, of space uh, that it would have taken to have freed up in order to get three 360 rads in this form factor of a case, that really would have stood it apart from its competition. But nonetheless, I think we got a great build with two 360 rads from EK in there. Um, and we had EK throughout this build. We had EK radiators in the top and the bottom. We had a velocity rgb water block on the cpu which is just gorgeous uh, we've of course had an ek uh, block on the gpu ek uh, ek res and pump ek cryo fuel doing its thing really nicely and all of that worked fantastically the one thing that i did have a bit of gripe with were the ek classic fittings that we bought now we we decided to go for 14 mil tubing i think 16 mil which is what I've got in the SMA A8 behind me, is just a little bit too big. I think 12 and 13 perhaps is a little bit too small. Uh, and it's the first time I've built with 14 mil tubing. Uh, the fitting choices are definitely more limited. And it's not the fittings itself. The fittings actually are pretty good. They've got an O-ring down right inside the fitting and an O-ring that clamps down as well. So you've got a double O-ring design, which is good. The issue actually was with the tolerance of the compression caps as you screw them down. So the actual inner diameter of those rings actually was pretty inconsistent. And many, but not all, of those fittings were actually scratching the hell out of the tubing as we were trying to put the compression fitting over the top of it. And what we ended up having to do to make sure that we didn't have really nastily, horribly scratched uh, tubing, which would have just ruined the aesthetic, was actually push, push the tubing in to the fitting whilst it already had the compression cap on it. Now that that is less than ideal, and I'm not going to lie, we did we did break one O-ring uh, doing this, and I think. Under any other normal circumstances, it would have been a case of sending those fittings back and replacing them with some new ones. But Ben made quite a long journey to my house here. We had a weekend to build it and by hook or by crook, we had to get it done. So to hit the brief, the 1440p 
uh, on Ultra. We've got, uh, we got, as I said, the Intel i7 uh, 9700K. I still think that he should have gone for AMD, particularly with the 3000 lineup with Ryzen, but despite my best efforts, I couldn't sway him. Uh, a beautiful set of black Dominator RAM from Corsair, 16 gigs, more than adequate for gaming, um, and a 2070 Super. Uh, again, with a wonderful EK water block on it, that will absolutely crank out uh, anything that he wants from, from a gaming perspective. And I do suspect he's got a little bit of headroom if he was to get into some simple uh, 1080p video encoding as well. Uh, so there we go, an absolute behemoth of a water cool beast. A big thank you to Ben for letting us build it on the channel. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like, share and subscribe. And, as always, I will see you in my next one.